Miami flooding, Miami beach floods during high tide. The city spent $500 million installing pumps to push seawater back into the ocean, which works until the pumps break or the ocean rises higher. The average elevation is six feet above sea level, which sounds safe until you realize sea levels are rising three millimeters per year. That means Miami has maybe 50 years before high tide reaches doorsteps permanently. The city's solution, building luxury condos on stilts while navigating the ongoing risks. The drainage system was designed in 1930 for a city one-tenth the current size. Neighborhoods like Shorecrest flood monthly because the gravity-based sewage system flows backward when seawater rises. Miami spent decades building directly on limestone that absorbs water like a sponge. You cannot build a seawall around porous rock. The ocean just comes up through the, the ground. Projections show three feet of sea level rise by 2100, which could put 60% of Miami underwater and cost over $400 billion in lost property. Your morning commute already requires checking tide schedules to avoid flooded roads. Phoenix water? Phoenix receives seven inches of rain per year, but maintains 200 golf courses. The city consumes 250 gallons of water per person daily, double the national average in a desert where summer temperatures exceed 115 degrees Fahrenheit for weeks. Arizona's water supply comes from the Colorado River, which lost 20% of its flow over the last two decades due to drought and overuse. Lake Mead dropped so low, threatening hydroelectric power generation. The city approved 40,000 new homes in 2023 despite state officials declaring a water shortage. Developers keep building because Arizona law prioritizes existing water rights over future sustainability. Nevada and California have senior water rights dating to the 1920s. Phoenix comes last. The city recently told new suburban developments they cannot connect to municipal water supplies. Climate models predict the Colorado River flow could decrease another 35% by 2050, eliminating Phoenix's primary water source. LA. Earthquakes. Los Angeles has 25,000 buildings that are at high risk of collapse during the next major earthquake. Most were built before 1980, with unreinforced masonry or non-ductile concrete that can shatter during shaking. The city identified these structures decades ago, but lacks funding for mandatory retrofits. Engineers have identified which sections are most likely to fail during the next magnitude 7.0 event. The San Andreas Fault runs directly under the metropolitan area and has not ruptured in over 300 years. Geologists call it a locked fault storing centuries of accumulated stress. When it releases, ground shaking could last 60 seconds and damage up to 1,500 freeway bridges. Retrofitting costs $150 billion, but funding for these improvements has been difficult to secure. Neighborhoods like Koreatown and downtown pack 50,000 people per square mile into buildings that predate modern seismic codes. Emergency response plans assume most hospitals will sustain damage and remain unusable for weeks. Water mains will rupture across 7,000 locations, leaving 4 million people without running water. Economic losses could reach $200 billion with potentially 50,000 fatalities and injuries. Houston hurricanes. Houston paved over 40% of its wetlands that naturally absorbed flood water. The city has no zoning laws, allowing developers to build with fewer drainage considerations. Hurricane Harvey dumped 60 inches of rain in 2017, flooding 300,000 structures and causing $125 billion in damage. Despite this, development has continued in these same flood zones. Reservoir systems built in the 1940s cannot handle current rainfall volumes because the upstream watershed expanded fivefold. During Harvey, engineers were forced to release water from attics and Barker reservoirs, which in turn flooded 10,000 homes to prevent dam failures that would flood 100,000 homes. The city approved 60,000 new homes and floodplains over the last decade. Insurance companies now refuse coverage in certain zip codes, leaving homeowners with properties that are difficult to sell or insure. Climate change increases hurricane intensity and rainfall rates by 15% per degree of warming. Houston will face Harvey-level floods every 10 to 15 years instead of once per century. NYC Subway, New York City's subway system, opened in 1904 and still operates with infrastructure from that era. Signal systems use mechanical relays invented before World War I that limit train frequencies to one every three minutes. Modern computer-based systems could run trains every 90 seconds, doubling capacity without building new tunnels. Replacing signals costs $20 billion and requires shutting down lines for years. Securing this funding remains a major hurdle. Tunnels flood during heavy rain because drainage pumps were designed for 1900s precipitation levels. Climate change increased rainfall intensity by 25% since the system was built. Hurricane Sandy flooded seven subway tunnels in 2012, causing $5 billion in damage that took three years to repair. The Metropolitan Transportation Authority deferred maintenance for decades, creating a repair backlog exceeding $100 billion. Stations have crumbling concrete, 
leaking ceilings, and electrical systems that are dangerously outdated. The L train tunnel under the East River corroded so severely that engineers originally planned an 18-month closure for repairs. Public outcry forced them to attempt a less invasive fix that faces long-term durability concerns. Track fires occur frequently because garbage accumulation ignites from electrical sparks. The system carries 5.5 million riders daily through infrastructure designed for 2 million. Weekend service disruptions for maintenance anger passengers but prevent catastrophic failures. California fires. California builds suburbs directly into fire-prone wildlands called the Wildland Urban Interface. These areas combine flammable vegetation with wooden houses and inadequate firefighting resources. The state added 2 million homes to high fire risk zones over the last 30 years. This model has been profitable for developers, but leaves homeowners with significant risk. Insurance companies now refuse coverage in fire zones, leaving 10% of California homeowners unable to obtain private insurance. The state-run insurer of last resort charges triple the normal rates and may become insolvent after the next major fire season. Climate change extended fire season from four months to year-round by increasing temperatures and reducing moisture. California experienced five of its six largest fires in history over the last five years. The 2018 campfire destroyed 19,000 structures and resulted in 85 fatalities in Paradise, a town that rebuilt in the same fire-prone location. People were drawn to these areas despite the warnings because property was affordable and views were beautiful. Pacific Gas and Electric Equipment sparked that fire and several others, leading to a $25 billion bankruptcy settlement. The company passes those costs to customers through higher electricity rates. Prescribed burns could reduce fire risk by clearing excess vegetation, but controlled burns often face public resistance due to the smoke, creating a difficult trade-off. Chicago Freeze, Chicago's infrastructure was designed for occasional cold snaps, not polar vortex events that freeze the city for weeks. The 2019 vortex brought temperatures to negative 23 degrees Fahrenheit with wind chills reaching negative 50. Natural gas demand spiked so high that utilities urged residents to lower thermostats to prevent system failures. Water mains burst due to deeper frost, and salt supplies quickly depleted as storms became more frequent. The electrical grid struggled because power plants cannot operate efficiently in extreme cold while demand reaches record highs. Chicago's aging infrastructure includes steam pipes and mechanical systems from the 1960s that crack under thermal stress. Building heating systems designed for negative 10 degrees cannot maintain indoor temperatures when outside conditions drop to negative 30. Climate change paradoxically increases polar vortex frequency by weakening jet stream patterns that normally keep Arctic air contained. The city faces these extreme events every two to three years instead of once per generation. Boston snow. Boston receives 50 inches of snow annually on average, but infrastructure assumes snow melts between storms. The 2015 winter dumped 110 inches in six weeks, completely overwhelming removal and storage systems. The city ran out of places to put snow, with some piles remaining until July. Transit systems shut down repeatedly because snow removal equipment could not keep pace. The MBTA lost $50 million in revenue while spending $35 million on overtime for workers attempting to clear tracks. Commuter rail froze solid because diesel fuel gelled in tanks and switches failed under ice accumulation. The city's snow removal budget of $18 million depleted by January, requiring $40 million in emergency funding. Climate change increases atmospheric moisture, creating heavier snowfall during winter storms, even as overall winters warm. Boston now experiences more frequent intense snow events separated by warmer periods that cause melt-freeze cycles. Ice dams form on roofs, causing water damage and collapses. Insurance claims exceeded $500 million during the 2015 winter. Building codes only accounted for snow loads up to 40 pounds per square foot. However, recent storms have dumped 70 pounds per square foot, overwhelming older structures. The city's emergency response plans proved inadequate for sustained weather events lasting weeks instead of days. To help us grow even more, please like this video and subscribe.